Hey everyone, my name is Steve Abrams. I'm a backend engineer on the delivery team at GitLab. And um, this month I am one of the release managers. So I thought I would take some time to show everyone a little bit about what release managers do. And also really just dig into what auto deploy is, how it works and how you can kind of um, look up where your merge request is in terms of being deployed. So I'm gonna start out by just taking a look at the um, deployments handbook page. So you might've stumbled upon this page before, but this goes over what happens during a deployment. So after your merge request gets merged, at some point along the way, it gets included in an auto deploy branch. So these branches are created not every few, I mean, they're created every few hours, several times per day. Uh, and that's what these times are. So the branch is essentially just a cut of saying like, okay, we're gonna take all of the commits before this time and um, create a new branch. If we wanna see where those branches are, you might think, okay, let's go take a look at the branches. Um, but the problem is, we actually don't create the branches on the GitLab project. They are in the security project of GitLab. The reason being is that we deploy gitlab.com from our security mirror, not from the canonical open source project. Um, the security mirror is a mirrored repository, so it contains all of the same changes um, as the open source canonical project. But the only difference is if we have any security vulnerabilities that we need to fix, we put them in the security repository uh, to keep them private until we're able to release them. So if you wanted to take a look and see the auto deploy branches, you would look at the security um, repository. However, I'm not going to open that right now purely because uh, I don't want to accidentally divulge any secure um, so once we have that branch created, then that branch is taken and uh, turned into a package. So what does that mean? Well, first we tag that branch. And so um, that tag actually happens, if you are uh, aware on, there, there's multiple components that make up GitLab. So there's GitLab, there's GitLab pages, there's um, Gitly. So all of those need to be packaged up together at some point in order to actually create a um, runnable version of GitLab. So Omnibus GitLab is the project that takes care of all of that packaging. And if we look at the tags on the security mirror of the Omnibus project, which I think we can safely show here, that over. Um, here we can see, here are these, um, different tags. And so it shows a version of GitLab. So that is a commit on GitLab. That is the commit that, that was essentially the cutoff. It shows a version of Gitly that's running and pages, shell, cast, and Elasticsearch. So this makes up this auto deploy tag version. And so now this number might start to look a little bit more familiar to you. Uh, if you are a member of the announcements channel at GitLab, you will see um, different things that look like this number. So we can see here, we have what looks very similar to that number actually, and it might be that same one. Yep. So here, this was a tag that was created today at 1800 hours UTC. This was the... Um, and see this commit is actually, it matches the commit from the GitLab project. And then this commit or this commit value, I believe is coming from the Omnibus project. Um, yes, that is the, the, the tag value you can see right here. So if we look at all of these different um, environments that have deployments happening, we can see there's different branches. So right now, the one that we just saw is being deployed to uh, staging Canary. And if you were curious about your own commit, you could definitely take a look at, in that security mirror, the auto deploy branches. And the auto deploy branches are just this first portion. Um, so 
Let's take a little bit further dive from there. So after it's tagged here, then a package is created automatically. So we will end up with a package that is that aligns with this version is what we can call it. Um, the package then starts to be deployed. And as we saw here, we have these deployments ongoing. If you uh, join the F upcoming release channel, that's the channel where release managers are usually doing all of their work. You'll see um, things like this, uh, baking time completed, and all sorts of other things having to do with coordinated pipelines. Um, and so here, actually, we can see GitLab pushed a new tag. And so that's the tag that was pushed, meaning it was tagged. Um, that, that's sort of like the cutoff that was made. And then we created a new coordinated pipeline. So we created this timestamp pipeline on this auto deploy branch. And so this branch, you can look at the um, link there, is on the security mirror. And that is the branch name. And it's at that commit. And I believe that is the one we were just looking at on the announcements page as well. The AFD. Yep. So we can see that aligns with that new tag and pipeline being created. And so that happened at well, 12 o'clock my time is actually 1800 um, in terms of UTC. So that was this auto deploy branch being created. So if we jump back in um, and look at some of these, we can see that there's, there's multiple versions happening at once. So this was a production deploy that just finished. Um, but at the same time, we also had a canary deploy finishing. And then now we see there's another uh, version as well. So there's, there's several versions being deployed to different environments at once. So this channel can be a little bit difficult to look at if you don't realize which version you want to look at. Um, and what I'll take a dive into is the coordinated pipeline. So I actually just got a notification here uh, as a release manager that we actually have a um, package that's ready to be deployed to production. So packages are actually not deployed to production automatically at this time. Uh, when things have made it through uh, all of the Canary environments and QA checks, uh, it does not automatically get triggered for a production release. A release manager has to come in and manually click a button to start it. So I will take us through that process right now. This happens on the ops instance, which is separate from the main gitlab.com instance. But what we can see here is that a bunch of this has already run. Um, we had some wait jobs for Omnibus. This is the build phase. We were actually waiting for the package to uh, be built. So this pipeline was generated um, earlier on in a similar way to this, where there was a new tag, and then we created a new coordinated pipeline. But because it takes a, a couple hours for those packages to be fully built, we have these jobs to just wait until they're built. After that, we start running through environments. So first, we deploy to staging canary and staging ref. And then we run QA tests. The QA tests are just these end-to-end -end tests that run on the environment. If something goes wrong, these will fail, and it will stop this package from being promoted and deployed to any further environment. So if, if one of these failed, we would not move on with this pipeline. Once they pass, we can then move on to deploying production canary. So production canary works the same way. We run the canary deployment, and then we run QA tests on it. After we've run um, QA tests on production canary, we actually have a baking time. So this is this job, all it is is a timer. It just sits for 30 minutes when we just wait for traffic on production canary to, to see if any incidents happen or any other sort of monitoring rings any alarms. And then if nothing, if everything is okay, then I get that notification in Slack that we saw that says that the baking time has completed. And now I can go ahead and click the Promote button. And so that's going to start the deployment to, whoops, to staging. And then after staging, we kind of go through the same thing. We then deploy to production. You'll notice here we don't do the same style of QA testing that we did on Canary. 
That's because we're trusting the QA tests that were run on Canary and Staging Canary. Staging Canary and Canary should be the same environments as staging and production. Um, they're just a smaller subset of them. And then once those are all complete, that's pretty much the end of the entire pipeline. Um, we'll dig a little bit more into those now. So I want to point out, though, that that actually aligns really well with what you see in this um, diagram. We first have to wait for the package to occur or to, to be built. Then we deploy to staging canary and staging ref, run QA tests, deploy to production canary, run QA tests, wait for our baking time. I pushed the button to manually promote, and then we deploy to staging and to production. So that follows that that, that pipeline actually follows the same um, workflow as this chart. So if we want to look into what's actually happening here, um, QA tests are just tests. They, they are run um, against the environment. So if we look at um, production canary, we can see that we're actually on a different project here, the quality canary project. And we run all of these QA tests. And these are actually tests running against the deployed Canary uh, um, package. And we can see here, we actually did have a, uh, a failure on this one, which would get logged for the call. Um, the other thing that we can look at is what happens when we actually deploy to an environment. So I will open up a different pipeline here. Let's go ahead and look back at the one that just finished. So step back here. So this was the coordinated pipeline for the deployment that just finished a little while ago. And we can see that we deployed to production at some point. So that actually, the, the actual process of deploying to that environment happens on a project called Deployer. So it's a downstream pipeline. If I take a look at that downstream pipeline, this is where we see all of the infrastructure changes actually happening. We have some package checking and preparations that happen. We run migrations. So this is the database migrations we'll run at this point. We um, deploy to Giddily, deploy Prefect, and then we deploy Kubernetes. And now that's actually also happening in a downstream pipeline. So if I click into that, that's on the K8 workloads um, project for GitLab.com. And this is where the Kubernetes deployment is, is occurring. So we have all of these different environments that run uh, and are, are um, slowly rolled out. And once those are all rolled out, we can consider it as deployed. All right. But I hope that that kind of gives you an idea a little bit of how deployments work, uh, where you can kind of search around in Slack uh, to look at things. I will note that this coordinator pipeline is not something most people will have access to. So I wanted to show it here to kind of show how it aligns with this diagram. But in reality, you probably won't be able to see this most of the time. Um, this is something that release managers will see and, and some other people in infrastructure will have access to. But most uh, people in engineering may or may not have access to that. But you should all have access to the announcements channel, which does allow you to um, look at these changes. One other thing that can be very helpful, actually, now that I think about it, is if we look at for example, this is the one that I just started, the um, deployment to staging. We can click into the thread, and it actually shows all of the changes that are being deployed. So it shows the commit range for each project. And so for the GitLab project, we can take a look at the actual range. And this is on the security um, mirror. But it will show all of the different commits that are included. So if you wanted to see if yours is included in the currently deploying um, 
pipeline, for example, you could click into one of those and take a look and see if you're committed. I hope that's helpful. And as always, please feel free to ask any questions in the delivery channel or the G delivery channel on Slack. Thanks, everyone.